Здравейте всички! Радвам се да ви видя за поредната лекция в нашата зала C. Here, so, I'm very pleased to see you all coming for the next presentation in our session C Talks. Here to talk to you about kind and how to be kind and get really good results with Kubernetes is VMware's own Rostislav or Ross. So, please give him a round of applause. So, hello everybody. Uh, I'm Ross and I'm here to talk to you about uh, testing cloud native applications with Kind. So, let's start with the setup. So, imagine that you are a developer and you're developing a modern cloud native application, which is basically a set of microservices. And uh, these microservices run in, inside a, uh, containers and these containers are being executed inside Kubernetes clusters. And these clusters are usually set up on uh, some uh, cloud provider or uh, on some uh, on-prem custom private cloud. So you need to test these applications and uh, testing is uh, quite hard. So let's see a part of uh, developer's workflow. So as you can see here, we start with the developer, so basically, this blue guy here. And uh, the developer starts by writing code. And after some code has been written, uh, a developer usually tries to test this code locally. The developer then compiles the code and runs uh, these uh, checks. Now, these may be unit tests, this may be end-to-end -end integration, validation tests, whatever. Uh, many of those can be run automatically and many of those uh, can be run manually. And usually, developers always like to have uh, some set of tinker tests. So these are basically tests when you actually provision uh, the application somewhere, uh, preferably on a, your local machine and into like a Kubernetes testing environment if it's a Kubernetes native application. And uh, you basically try to uh, break it manually or verify if it runs correctly or like whatever. So after some of the tests have failed or succeeded, we get back to the uh, source level and uh, we use the feedback from the test loop to uh, modify the source code. And uh, if we choose, we can iterate again into this local loop here. Or if you are like, uh, okay with the code and we are happy with the change, uh, we go and check in the code inside a code repository. Now, this code repository can be GitHub, GitLab, whatever, and usually this code repository has some sort of CI hooked to it, and uh, what we do here is like uh, the code repository calls in the CI, the CI builds the application, and uh, it can also run some set of uh, unit tests and it can then deploy the application into a uh, sort of development environment, which is a relatively shallow copy of uh, the uh, normal execution environment which this application is going to have. Now, here we usually have a set of automatic tests, although this can be also done manually, and uh, again, we have a loop into which uh, we iterate in order to get the code done. Now, what we do with respect with, of local testing. So, if you are a developer and you want to test Kubernetes native application locally, usually you would go with some of these two solutions, Minikube or Microcades. Now, these two solutions are a little bit uh, like just narrow-minded and uh, they just provide you with a, a single node cluster of Kubernetes. And uh, basically, this may, may actually uh, have a lot of problems covered and uh, you may, for example, not be able to test uh, a daemon set properly because you would get uh, a single instance of your uh, pod. So in order to actually uh, do more thorough testing, for example, with uh, multiple, uh, multiple Kubernetes nodes, you would usually go 
sort of this way. And uh, you can use kubeadm and combine it with uh, VMs and uh, get a local cluster manually using VMs. But this is actually pretty much manual process and uh, usually developers are a little bit uh, like lazy and they don't like provisioning uh, clusters with VMs all the time, uh, even though they can actually automate this using Vagrant, Ansible, or whatever. And uh, this can cause uh, some problems. For example, if uh, clusters get reused and uh, the testing environment is uh, unclean. Now, what we do if we are actually in the CI space? So here we, we have basically three main solutions. Uh, we have the commercial CI. The commercial CI uh, are the like normal CIs, Travis, Circle, whatever. These are pretty much limited solutions because I'm not aware as of today of any of the commercial CIs providing you with uh, Kubernetes clusters. So what they usually give you is uh, some sort of a Linux container or uh, some sort of a VM, which can be like maybe Linux, FreeBSD, Mac, Windows, whatever. Um, then you have uh, public clouds and private clouds, and these are basically the way to get uh, a proper Kubernetes cluster. Unfortunately, these solutions are not uh, cheap, and basically in order to test your application properly, you need to like spend a ton of money here, and uh, this is, uh, especially for some small companies, is not a good idea. So what do we want uh, in the end? We want uh, a Kubernetes-aware uh, tests for our application. We want these tests to be as close as possible to production. We want uh, to be able to automate these tests so uh, we can actually reuse those tests uh, in both uh, CI and uh, locally as much as possible. So we don't want to uh, always get a developer push their code into the code repository and wait for the full CI process to just get uh, some like silly test failure. And uh, like this is going to slow down developers and we want to be able to get easy local, local tinker tests. So actually developers can actually play with their application on an environment that's as close as possible to production. So let's start talking about kind. Kind is actually an acronym. It's, uh, it stands for Kubernetes in Docker. And it, uh, it is a provisioning tool that uh, actually allows you to run Kubernetes clusters and including multi-node Kubernetes clusters inside Docker containers. So each uh, node of the cluster is actually a Docker container. Kind is actually developed by the uh, Kubernetes community. Uh, it was uh, started uh, by uh, Benjamin Eller and uh, James Mandele from SIG testing, which is basically the part of the Kubernetes community that uh, is dealing with testing Kubernetes itself. Uh, it was originally started uh, to test conformance tests, although we actually have, uh, we are also executing tests for kubeadm, which is a pretty different uh, use case for kind, but uh, we actually use a heavily modified version of kind. Uh, actually, today we are lucky to have uh, Lubomir here. Yeah. And Lubomir is actually one of the developers of uh, kind, so if you have like more in-depth questions, like how this thing really works underneath, uh, or you want to get uh, like start contributing to kind, you can turn to him too. So this is, by the way, I'm not sure if I, if you can scan this, but uh, this is the code which can lead you to the page of kind, which is basically this. Now this has a lot of uh, material, so you can go inside and there is very helpful things inside there. So what are the kind's principles? Now kind was designed to be uh, minimalistic in assumptions, so the only thing that kind actually requires you to have is uh, a uh, Docker engine. Also kind is uh, portable, so it can execute on both uh, Linux, Windows, and Mac. So it actually 
is as much portable as Docker is. So basically, it runs everywhere Docker runs. Kind is also designed to be hermetic. So this means that uh, your testing environment is relatively isolated from the uh, surrounding environment. So you don't get uh, your tests failing because of uh, some sort of outside uh, mess. Kind is also designed to be easy to automate. So it has a quite good command line interface, which is like easy to use. It has a nice config file format, so uh, you can have different sets of configurations for your tests. And it also can be consumed as a, a Golang library. So you can actually vendor this inside of your Golang tests and, uh, for example, use Gint Go to spin up uh, Kubernetes clusters on a per test case. Kind also supports multi-node setups, including multiple control planes, and uh, it is also a CNCF certified Kubernetes installer, which means that uh, whatever you provision with Kind, you're also going to get uh, in a like Kubernetes cluster provisioned with other CNCF uh, certified Kubernetes installers. Now, how does this work? You can see here uh, that we start with uh, Docker at the base, and we have uh, various containers here. In this case, we have a couple of clusters, and uh, the first cluster is a single node cluster. So whenever you actually run kind, just like kind create cluster, you get a cluster like this one, which is a single node cluster. It has, uh, it is like this is a container itself, the green box, and. Uh, Inside of here, we have uh, the usual like systemd, containerd, and kubelet. Now, this is a Ubuntu image-based container. I think that uh, for like the latest Kubernetes versions, this is based on Ubuntu 19.10 or something like this. Or like 18.10, can't remember exactly. Um, and uh, we also have uh, the Kubernetes pods here. Now, these are like the standard Kubernetes uh, system pods. This is what is, gets provisioned by uh, kubeadm itself. Now, Kind actually uses kubeadm to provision pods. Uh, this is, of course, uh, some developer like <coughs> workload that's uh, not provisioned by Kind. So this is just to show you that Kind does not take over your uh, Docker instance. It can actually be shared, for, for example, when building uh, containers locally by the developer. Then we have a like, free node cluster. This is a cluster that has only a single control plane node. We have like, the same set of uh, stuff here, and uh, we have a couple of worker nodes, which also have uh, like standard stuff inside them, like the QProxy and KindNet. Now, KindNet is uh, a custom CNI plugin, which was developed by the Kind developers in order to like, isolate uh, like networking issues that are caused by buggy CNIs and stuff like that. And it's used by default inside of Kind. And you can basically opt out of it. Uh, I'll show you how a little bit later on. But uh, like this is the core way things are done. And uh, this is how the CLI works. Now, this is a quick cheat sheet, and it's actually page one of it. And here we start with creating a cluster. Now, creating a kind cluster is really simple. And this will actually provision you with a single node cluster. Here's a like, slightly more complex case. Now, it's good to always give uh, non-default names to your clusters, especially if they are like, being executed by some uh, automated test. Uh, here is how you delete the cluster. Now, it's important to say that uh, if you don't have a minus minus name, on each of the kind commands, kind is going to use the default cluster named kind. So, for example, if you have created a cluster like this, and uh, you try to delete a cluster by not specifying minus minus name cluster one, uh, you are going to get an error because uh, it cannot find uh, cluster named kind. Now, here is a like very uh, good feature of kind. It's kind load. And uh, this is a nice feature if you're actually a developer and you're developing uh, 
on your local machine and you actually produce uh, containers, like container images inside of uh, your Docker instance, or you actually consume uh, container images from outside. So in the first uh, command, we have Docker image, and here we can specify a container image which is on our local Docker instance, and uh, this container image then gets to get like uploaded uh, on uh, each of the uh, Kubernetes uh, like cluster nodes, and you can then consume it uh, from your Kubernetes deployment. So you don't like have to provision a uh, registry somewhere or upload to Docker uh, some test image. Now, uh, if you actually have the tarball, you can use image archive for this. Now, this is the second part of the cheat sheet. Uh, we have here another like very important command, especially if you're a developer or uh, if you're trying to integrate this into your CI. Uh, this is kind of export logs. And what you have here is uh, you need to, to give it an uh, empty directory and it will basically uh, do a momentous snapshot of uh, all of the logs of a Kubernetes cluster and put it inside of this directory and uh, into a subdirectories in there so it doesn't actually get uh, like a full bag of uh, stuff that's uh, not structured. Uh, you can even browse this. And you get all of the like logs that are associated with this cluster, including the pods that are like user wor workloads that are executing inside, uh, the system pods, uh, like JSON inspects of uh, the Docker containers that are of, like the, the kind cluster. So it's really everything. And if you're trying to debug a hard problem, this is like really nice feature. So you get a directory full of logs and you get to get like grepping inside of there. Then you have the normal uh, get commands. Uh, you can get clusters, the nodes of a cluster, and uh, you have like a very important command, which is basically kubeconfig path, like get kubeconfig path. This is going to give you like a, a path to a YAML file which contains your kubeconfig. And you can then use uh, this uh, YAML file with uh, kubectl, octant, or whatever to like, control your cluster. And this is basically the, the admin uh, kubeconfig. You can also get the full contents of the admin kubeconfig on standard output using this command. Now, let's see uh, kind config. Now, the kind config format is really like powerful. Uh, if you are actually familiar with uh, how Kubernetes YAML files work. This is basically almost uh, the same. Uh, we start with uh, API version and uh, kind, which are like always these. These are currently fixed for v1 alpha 3. Uh, one notable difference from standard uh, Kubernetes stuff here is that uh, you don't get uh, metadata name because these are like, like not uh, full-blown uh, API server objects. Now, let's see our first example. Now, this is uh, a config file that provisions a single control plane node uh, by two worker nodes with a custom CNI. And uh, we start here with the standard stuff. We get uh, like the, the node setup, and we just uh, list here as a like normal YAML list uh, the Kubernetes nodes and their roles. Now, uh, in our case, we don't do anything special with these uh, nodes, so uh, we basically allow kind to choose the Kubernetes version and uh, like every other settings of these nodes. So this is probably not a very good idea for uh, basically doing some serious testing. Um, here is like the networking part of uh, it. Uh, we get to get like uh, the CNI plugin disabled by default, which is basically it allows it to in install your custom CNI plugin. And in our case, I was going to install here Calico. So uh, I have overall the pod subnet with uh, this value, which is basically uh, what Calico is hardwired with. My second example provisions a single node cluster, uh, which is basically uh, like based on uh, Kubernetes version 1.16.2. So we have here a single node, we have a control plane role, and uh, it's important to say that uh, whenever kind provisions clusters that have only control plane nodes in there, 
uh, these control plane nodes are not tainted, so you can actually uh, get your user workloads working on them. But if you actually provision, like in this case, a cluster which has a control plane node and a couple of worker nodes, the control plane node is going to be tainted. So uh, your user workloads do not get executed uh, on it. it. They get executed only on the worker nodes. So let's get back here. Uh, here we have a single control plane node. We override the uh, image, which is going to be used for uh, by kind for uh, creating the nodes. And all of the standard uh, like kind images, which, which are basically released with uh, each uh, Kubernetes uh, version iteration, are called kindest slash node, and then they are followed, like they're tagged with uh, the Kubernetes version. But of course, uh, kind is actually uh, also developed by like, the Kubernetes testing community, so it has also built-in functionality uh, to create your own node images and even to actually build Kubernetes from source and uh, like build these images from actual Kubernetes source code. So for example, if you actually have a local modified Kubernetes copy, you can uh, use kind to uh, like create such images and uh, test it as well. Then we have uh, like extra mounts. Uh, here we are actually uh, mounting a host path, which is called test data read only into the like slash MNT container directory. Now, what would you use this for? This will basically uh, like allow you to supply your uh, test containers with test data, which is on your local machine, and then you can actually use this test data inside of your Kubernetes deployments by uh, using host path mounts. Now, uh, kind can actually be also used as a standard Golang API, and uh, I'm not going into like the full depth of this, but uh, you can basically, like this is all you need to get uh, Kubernetes cluster running. All we do here is just check if the cluster is existing. And uh, here is how you delete cluster. Now, the little bit awkward thing is that uh, kinds internals are like uh, still not pretty much fixed. So these can actually change, uh, but uh, they're like uh, relatively good enough to be used and they don't change too much to be get uh, used inside of, uh, say, some integration or whatever test. Now, let's go with our demo. So I think I have a little bit more time than expected, which is kind of good. So while we are waiting, uh, how many of you are actually developers? <coughs> wow. And how many of you actually develop microservice-based applications which run on Kubernetes? Okay. Okay. 
So folks at the back, can you see this? Okay, so let's start with a simple kind cluster. And uh, like, as you can see here, we uh, start with an uh, awful lot of nodes. Now we have, uh, we have the uh, standard stuff at the top and we also have uh, a total of 10 nodes. Now, these are basically uh, three control plane nodes. All of these are running the latest stable version as of yesterday of uh, Kubernetes. And uh, these are basically followed by another seven worker nodes. So let's start provisioning this. So I have cheated a little bit and downloaded the 1.3 gig uh, image like beforehand. So it actually skipped the first step uh, like very fast. And uh, now it's preparing uh, the nodes. As you can see, this is like uh, the kind of developers like uh, having fancy icons uh, on the terminal. So uh, you can actually amuse yourself while you're waiting for your cluster to appear. Now, what I'm going to show you right now is, uh, you may have actually seen this somewhere. It's pretty much used on cloud native demos. So a Mojivoto is a like sort of fancy application, which we we shall use today for a part of our demo. This is a like pretty big complex YAML file which we're going to use for the deployment. Now one thing to mention here, if I actually get to show, get to get this bigger. Okay, we are going to see here a type of load balancer service. Now, kind does not get to like work with uh, load balancer services simply because load balancer services are usually uh, provided by uh, cloud providers, and uh, basically, uh, kind is not the cloud provider, so we have to change this. Now I'm going to do something uh, stupid in Kubernetes terms, which is basically get a random YAML file and uh, use this from the internet directly. Now we can see that uh, things are getting almost done here. This is the current usage, and we can see that we haven't yet reached, oh, we just reached uh, two gigs of uh, RAM being used by the VM here. So things are slowly populating. So how many of you actually used Kubernetes before? 
Wow, so, so most of you are probably admins, is that correct? Yeah. So actually, Kind is also uh, a tool that can be used, for example, for provisioning clusters with which you can actually play with. So uh, even if you're not a developer, you can actually use it to start playing with Kubernetes. And this is going to give you a more like real life clusters as compared to those that are like uh, being given to you by Minikube and uh, Microcades. So let's see how things are going. We are at a little bit over than two and a half gigs. Oops. So this is actually happening a lot faster uh, usually, but uh, I presume that uh, since I'm on battery here, uh, the CPU like, is in a, some sort of power preserving mode. Okay, so uh, we just finished, and uh, this is uh, our example, kubeconfig export, which we're going to use right now, just to redirect our local kubectl to... No. So we can actually see that our cluster is uh, right now deployed. Uh, we have like 1.16.2 1, 1 version of Kubernetes. We have uh, the three control plane nodes and the seven worker nodes. Then what we shall do right now is uh, get our application in it, which is basically we shall copy this one. And uh, what we are going to do is curl this. So we can see that the deployment is done. Now let's start another tab here so we can open something more graphical. So you can probably see here. So this, by the way, is uh, octant. And this is basically a slightly more graphical way of showing things inside a Kubernetes cluster. I may have actually made this a little bit too big. So 
if we go inside of the emoji voto, which is basically the namespace that's being provisioned, we can see that we have a lot of stuff here. What we are interested in is the service, which is the, like, the web service here. And uh, we are actually interested in getting the node port number, which we are going to do from looking at the YAML, which is basically this big port here. And we also need a node. So we are going to use normal kubectl, for example. No, that did not show well, so I'm going to get through here. I'm going to pick one worker node. Let's see the demo. Now which node actually gets a default IP address from uh, Docker, and this is basically what Docker has given to you. And now let's try and connect to the application. Oops. So this is our deployed emoji photo application. And as you can see, it's kind of like fancy. So let's get to our next part of uh, the demo. Uh, here, and you can see that this is basically uh, 4.2 gigs of uh, memory being used at the moment with uh, like 10 node cluster and uh, emoji photo application inside of this. So let's go and see our next part of the demo, which is our equation service. So here we are in the role of uh, having a microservice, which ba basically solves square equations. And uh, this microservice is like really simple. And what we are going to do is first build this, uh, this uh, microservice. What we are going to end up with here is basically this tarball, which is uh, our uh, image of the microservice. And uh, we are going to deploy this using this Kubernetes YAML file, which basically defines the service as a deployment with single replica and a node port service. So first we get to upload the service, which is done with And our next step is to just execute kubectl. To run the deployment. And if we get kubectl bots, we can see that this bot is being running and we can actually start playing with the service using curl. Now I have exposed this to port 30,000. And you 
you can see that uh, the service is returning something. So this is about it. Um, back to the presentation. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, uh, here is the QR code of my presentation. I'll be like, I would like to uh, have your feedback. And uh, like, this is not the actual slides, but the like the feedback page. But I would like to really have your feedback, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Your time here. Thank you. So. <clears throat> I think we have time for a couple of questions in the hall. Anything from the audience? Um, Rusty, how mature is all that to test, for example, custom build of Kubernetes? Because we do that in-house and we want to test, for example, some features that we develop. Can we re rely on kind or? Actually, it depends like on the, the parts of uh, kind. I'm not sure as, as like for kind as a whole. Uh, the internals of uh, kind, the APIs change from time to time. For example, the current stable version uh, is consumed slightly differently as a Golang library as compared to what is currently in master. Um, the config file format is currently at alpha free iteration. And uh, like it's still in its alpha phase, but uh, I'm sure that uh, any time in like the near future is going to go into beta. Uh, the command line interface is uh, a little bit more stable, but uh, like a more in depth, uh, like how each different uh, like feature of kind is uh, matured, uh, probably you need to like talk to either like Lubomir or uh, any of the actual kind developers. I'm not sure whether they actually have on their page uh, like a status list of uh, each feature uh, and how it's matured. Okay, one final question. If not, you can find both Ross and Lubo in the speaker's corner right after the presentation and throughout the venue till the rest of the day. I want to wish you a very nice rest of the day and to remind you that we have another Kubernetes related presentation after this one in the same hall. Also, you can take a look at the reception deck for some OpenFest merchandise and the donations box. Lunch will be after the next presentation. And yeah, hope to see you again. Have a nice day.